making an effort to pursue, or at the very least orbit, the principles of monstrous masculinity is what I try and do for my life. This doesn't mean that I do it perfectly or that I'm suggesting that you do it perfectly or even do it at all. I don't give this information so that you'll decide to follow me. It's not a good idea, I tend to fart. All jokes aside though, I myself am married. Not to the state, but to a woman. I've been asked questions about why I chose to get married. So in an effort to answer some of that, I'll ask this question. What is marriage? For myself, and put simply, I would say that marriage essentially, for a male, is a form of commitment to your own future. I have my reasons for saying this, but inevitably, this is where I'm going to end up in this segment. However, I'd like to show you how I got there as well. As we move forward in today's cultural climate, what was once simple and objective has been decided to be more and more subjective and convoluted. What with the rise of divorces, the grand majority initiated by women, and not to mention the rising numbers of men who are realizing that what they thought about the family courts and divorce law isn't what they had expected or signed up for. Old traditions are being abandoned and even in some cases being labeled as lies and oppressive. I'm not here to suggest to you any form of Christian marriage or union with the state. What I am suggesting is going back and examining what marriage has been, essentially. Some people will claim that marriage is simply a puffed up version of pair bonding. Ideas like this, however, are somewhat short-sighted. In some of its oldest iterations, marriage has been a primordial aspect of the building of cultures and civilizations not to mention simply communities in general. The family being the basic unit of such, seeing as how it would both sustain and perpetuate these communities. The construction of families was the goal. Marriage was as much insurance as the community was able to give to young women. For their future security in the chaos of life and a guide toward the things that she would grow to want in her lifetime for herself and family. The same as and molded by the generations of women and men who had come before them. A testament to the high value that has always been placed on women within any civilized community. She wasn't just given to any old male, however, but men who had been tested and tried from their boyhood and found to fit the standards and needs of the culture, which included by default the needs of that woman and their children. Both the male and female were given roles to not only counter the animal urges that if left unchecked would undermine the constitution of the community as a whole, but roles that would shift their trajectory into fulfilling lives among their families and friends within the community at large. This is not a claim that these systems were in any way perfect or which system was better than which. My claim would be that these systems were far better than the animal urges from the jungle that would not have facilitated the safety away from the chaos of nature that we have grown and evolved in for thousands of years. What people generally consider marriage today without the integrity of families is not only a husk of what it once was, but is not a reasonable pursuit for the average male today. We now live among the ruins and remains of what were once established families and instead entertain the ghosts of our once vibrant cultures. Where once the marriage of two young people would set about the union of families, of communities, and lay the seeds for growth of the collective. Today, these outcomes are not commonplace, nor are they the interests of young people today. With more and more of the responsibilities that we would have taken on ourselves in our communities, now being deferred to the state, we as individuals have less and less of an understanding as to what value any of the customs and traditions of the past offer us, aside from pageantry and superstition. I agree with the notion of abandoning things that have passed their prime and utility. However, if we don't remember why we started doing these things in the first place, then I would say it's best not for us to throw the baby out with the bathwater. 
just yet. As I said before, if you ask me what marriage is, this is the answer that I'll give you. Marriage is a form of commitment to your own future that now involves the participation of another. I won't say that a commitment to your own future requires you to develop intimate relationships with someone else, but what I will say is that no one escapes needing to relate to other homo sapiens or our natural tendency to do so. I have heard various women reply to the comments I make about dying alone with things like they have plenty of love from their family and that they can visit their brothers and sisters who have kids and that this is the same. Even heard the suggestion of paying someone to live with them in their old age. As if such a suggestion would even pale in comparison to a loving family. My response to them is consistently that what it is that they are doing in that scenario is leeching off of the hard work and cultivation of love in someone else's life. They are avoiding the fact that they are scared to risk themselves and instead make themselves a thief of the fruits of someone else's efforts and attention. I do not suggest that anybody dedicate a large portion of their life to not forming intimate relationships with others, more especially of the opposite sex. Males and females not only complement each other, have been designed to work with each other in nature, but have been doing so for millennia. Keep in mind, this whole talk of marriage isn't me suggesting that you now cuck yourself to the state or some incorrigible little girl. What I will suggest though, is that you make intimate relationships a part of the investment in your future life that you want to live. Sure, we can survive being alone, but we need not doom ourselves to it.